We're going to graph this quadratic. Now, it's missing its C value. So can we simply put plus zero? You don't have to, but understand that's plus zero. Before we start, we need to know our ABCs. Our A is a number in front of x squared, which would be negative two. Our B is a number in front of x, which would be negative eight. And our C is zero. Our formula to find the line of symmetry to start this type of problem, you need to know that formula. You cannot do anything without this formula. So, the opposite of B over 2A. So B is negative 8 and A is negative 2. The opposite of B over 2A. Negative negative 8 is positive 8. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So what does x equal? Negative 2. The importance of that, it creates a imaginary line down the middle of your parabola called the axis of symmetry. Your parabola is going to revolve around that. It's going to be the hub of it. Now, to create your parabola around that, we need to make a table. Okay. We need to make a table here. And negative 2 is the middle of your table. Negative 2 is the middle of your table. Now, before what we're going to do is we're going to plug in negative 2. But before we do that, what other values are surrounding negative 2? Negative 1. Yeah. A bigger than negative 2 is negative 1 and 0. And then, three and then below it is negative 3 and negative 4. Now, the first value we need to plug in is the middle one. The equation is negative b, sorry, is negative 2 x squared minus 8 times x. That's the form, that's the equation. You're going to plug in negative 2 for x. Whatever you get is going to go right there for y. So, negative 2 squared is 4. Leave the negative 2. And negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16. This is negative 8. So what's negative 8 plus 16? That's 8. Negative 2, 8 is right here. Over negative 2, up 8. That's a coordinate. Now we need to get some more coordinates. It's either we're going to plug in negative 3 and negative 4, or we're going to plug in negative 1 and 0. We don't need both. I hope you all understand these values, negative 1 and 0, are a lot easier to plug in. You could plug in either these two or these two. I chose the top because they're easier. OK, what number are we plugging in? Negative 1 according to the table. That becomes negative 2 times negative 1 squared is 1. And negative 8 times negative 1 is positive 8. So I got a negative 2 plus an 8 is 6. So negative 1 goes up 6. Negative 1 goes up 6. Okay. So negative 2 times x squared minus 8 times x. I always love plugging in 0. 0 is the easiest number to plug in. That's 
that, doesn't that zero equal zero minus zero? I always love zero. It's just it's so easy to plug in. So zero zero, right there, over zero up zero. You can kind of see half of a parabola. Now, could I take the time to plug in negative three and negative four? Yeah. Yeah, but it's not worth your time. What you need to look at is you need to look at these points. For instance, this one. You have to understand it's going to reflect, since it's two spaces over, it's going to reflect two spaces this way. Symmetry. Since this is one space right there, you're going to go one space this way. One space here, one space there. Can you see your problem? How many of it is like that because... It's uh, always... Always... Parabolas are always symmetrical. Parabolas are always symmetrical. You just follow the dots to know the shape. The negative means it's down. You'll know that. Negative means down. We'll talk about that later. Basically, you just follow the dots and you can see which direction it's going by the dots. It's always going to fold on that dotted line. Think of it like a folding line. Now, what would this value for negative 3 be? Look at your here. Six. What is negative 4? Zero. Aren't these always going to be the same? Yep. And these always be the same? Do you technically need to make all five spots? No. Could you just do three? Yeah. yeah, you could actually do three. It just sometimes helps to have five to kind of get a feel. Okay, last step. Let's label all the characteristics of this graph, and that's important. For instance, what's this little line called? Line of symmetry. The line or axis of symmetry. And in this particular situation, it's x equals negative 2. OK. Um, what is that coordinate called? Vertex. It's called a vertex. And that particular co that particular coordinate this time is negative two, over negative two up eight. Next, this point and this point uh, x -intercepts. are called x intercepts. Roots and zeros. Yep. Roots or zeros. They have all three names depending on which one they're asking for, but all, they're called all three. And the coordinates for those, the coordinates for those are zero, zero, zero and four, zero. That's those two coordinates. Oh, thank you. Negative four, zero. And lastly, the y-intercept, wait a second, is it the same as the x-intercept? Yeah. In this particular situation, that y-intercept is actually the same as the x-intercept in this particular situation. Now, one more thing. What is c equal? Zero. Zero. Look at the y-intercept. Zero. The y-intercept is always going to be c. It's a little helpful hint. The C value is always a Y intercept. Here's your table. Graph. To label all the pieces. If the question on the test does not ask you to label the points, you don't have to. But know the names of them for other types of questions.